Hello everyone, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Michael and today we're going to talk about another product. So this will be another tool of the day that we'll look at today. So if you're into fermenting, whether you uh, can, uh, if you do any kind of water bath canning, you know that the acidity level has to be at a certain pH to be safe to water bath can. And if it's not, then you have to pressure can something. So if you're making a sourdough bread that's the same fermentation process that the flour goes through with the water that makes your sourdough starter for your sourdough breads and the same thing goes for if you're making fermented foods such as sauerkrauts or kimchi or if you're going to make pickle beans and corn or if you're going to pickle uh, pickles themselves they have to be at a certain acidity level so you can definitely use the pH strips if you want to use one of those. There's all different kinds of these uh, pH meters on the market. And from looking at them, this, this one is the one that I picked over from looking at the reviews and things that people had left. So I am not being sponsored by this company. This is just something that I found on my own doing my own research and I wanted to share it with you. So this is a digital pH temp meter and this model number is YK2S and the manufacturer is Yen Mick. And so this one uh, comes with the information on it and got some tips on the bottom here of things what to do. And looking at inside the box, we'll open it up and we'll go through what's in the box. So it does have a user card and uh, it does say that we're supposed to calibrate this. So that's what we're going to do today. I already looked at everything that I needed to get set up for that so that uh, we'll be able to calibrate the machine to make sure that it is within tolerance where it needs to be. You don't want to use something and it not be intolerance and then you get a different reading of what you should have on it. So we're going to be using that today. I'm going to show you how to calibrate that. And then we've got a uh, manual guide here for foods. What is the pH level of foods? And so it's got different foods and things here. It's got meats, vegetables, baking goods, berries, vegetables, and then it's got some fermented items over here. It's got sauerkraut being one of them. Uh, just different pH levels for different foods. Uh, then it's got eggs on the back here, fruits, and some uh, da dairy products, uh, cream, milk, butter, cheddar cheeses, and different cheeses and things, what the pH levels of those are. So if you get into making your own cheeses and things, then definitely you can check the pH level of that to make sure that you're within tolerance to make sure that you're safe for what you're making. So in here also, it's got different buffers. So this is a 10.01 buffer, and it has two of those in the box. And then it has a 7.0 buffer, and it has two of those packages in the box. And then the last one it has here is the 4.0, and it has two of those packages in the box. So the meter itself, I'll pull it out so we can see that. It has a off and on switch here on the top, a calibration lever, and then it has a locking feature on it. And this feature down here, this unscrews, and this is where the node is that you would stick into your food to make sure that it's going to get the reading that you need it on. So this is what this is here. And that does come off because it does have a second one. I guess if that one gets damaged, they do ship a second one, and that is in this box here. So it's got a little washer ring on it here, a little rubber gasket that that would go on, and then you've got another one there in case that one gets damaged for some reason. So it does come with two. So I'm going to put this one away and make sure that I put the little gasket back in there because I don't want to lose that. And then we've got a little uh, tool here that you can use, a little pipette, to pull liquids and things up uh, to test it with that. So that's what comes in the box. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to look at the instructions and I'm going to put one of each of these away and I'm going to put this back in the box because I'm not going to need that because it's already got one on it. And we'll use one of each of these colors. And we'll look at the manual to see what it says. So looking at the manual on it, it's got a place here on the top for a battery. Uh, this is where this is. So I'm going to turn this on here just by pushing it on the front here. And we can see that it comes up to a temperature, a room temperature. And it's got here where mine is now, it's set to Fahrenheit. And I'm at 71.4 Fahrenheit. And then it comes up to a 5.27 on a pH level is what it's showing there. So uh, that's what the machine says right out of the box. So we'll turn that off and we're going to read some of the steps here to make sure that we're going to do. It says, please calibrate the pH before test. The calibration sequence is 7.0, 4.0, and then 10.01. So we'll do the 7 first, which is the green one. And then we will do the uh, 4.0, which is this uh, pinkish color, salmon color. And then we'll do the blue one, which is the 10.0. And it says, first, we want three containers. I've got three containers here. They are clean. 
and uh, of glass, it says. And then we want to use pure water, distilled water, which I've got here. And uh, you want to make sure you've got distilled water because tap water might have something come out in it that it, you might not, it might show the reading to be different from what it is. So definitely uh, make sure that you get some distilled water for that. And it says dissolve each one of these packets in 250 milliliters of distilled water. So I've got pint jars and on my pint jars, I've got markings on the side here that shows where 250 milliliters is. And that's roughly about one cup. So if you're looking at that, so about one cup of water, if your jars don't have that or you don't have any way of measuring milliliters, it's roughly about one cup. So we're going to mix all those together and then we're going to calibrate each one of those by sticking the probe into the water itself. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to set this up now. We'll get my water put into my containers and I'll be back in just a second. All right, I've got my water in my three containers now and the 250 on the side is roughly one cup on the other side. So I've got that there. I've got all three of those ready to go. And it says the first one that we're going to dissolve is the 7.0 in with our distilled water. So that one is the green one here. And I'm going to shake the contents down because I can feel it's all up here in the top. And then I've got a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut the top of this off. And we'll take our water and I'm just going to pour the contents of that right into that. So I've got the contents of this little envelope in my jar now. I'm going to put this one in the trash and I'm going to hang on to this other one that was here. It was not open and that way I can tell which one is which and I don't get them mixed up. So I've got three spoons here and you don't have to use three spoons. Just make sure that you wash it and you use your distilled water and wipe it off. And make sure that it's clean because you don't want to get the different uh, levels of it into the different jars. So I'm going to dissolve this in here with the spoon. All right, I've got that stirred it pretty good in there now. So I'm going to set this on this plate. All right, now that we've got our pH buffer solution powder mixed into my water here, let's go ahead and refer back to the card because we don't want to mess this up. So we're going to rinse the probe with pure water, use clean tissue paper to wipe off the water. And we're going to put the 7.0 solution, shake gently with the meter, wait a few seconds until the reading is stable. Press the calibrate button five seconds and release. Calibrate displayed on the window should be 7.0. It's flashing three times. Rinse the probe with pure water and then we'll go on to the 4.1. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and give this a little bit of a rinse. I'm going to make sure that this is clean. So I'm going to go to the sink and we'll use some of my distilled water and I'm going to clean this off. I'll be right back. All right, I've given the probe a rinse. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And it said to stick it in the water and then to just kind of make sure that it kind of levels itself out and it is moving. It's at 6.76. I'm going to hit the calibrate button and hold that for five seconds. All right, so I can see here that it did flash. I've got 7.0 on my screen. I'll show you what that is. So now that I know that mine 7.0 is good, I'm going to set this to the side and we'll move on to our next one. So I'm going to go wash the probe off one more time. All right, now that I've got the 7 one done, I'm going to go ahead and do my 4.00 now. We'll put the chemical into the water. I got me a clean spoon here, or you can wash the other one that you have there. You can definitely do that way. And we're going to mix this together until all the crystals are dissolved into the water. All right, I've got the 4.0 in the solution now. I'm going to go ahead and insert the probe into the side of it. And it's showing 4.05 just as it sits right there. And I'll give it just a little bit of a shake. And it did come down to 3.98. And I'm going to hit the calibrate and hold that for five seconds. And it did come back. You can see it's showing 4.0 on the side of it. I'll stick it back down in there again just to make sure. All right, it's showing here 4.0 on the side before it went back up again. So we know we've got a good calibration on that. So I'm gonna take this and set this aside. And I'm just gonna put this in front of it here just in case I have to come back and do something else with it. That way I'll know which one of these is which. And I'm gonna go rinse this off and I'll be back and we'll do our last one. All right, I've got the probe washed now. This is my 10.01 and we're gonna go ahead and do that the same way. We'll put the uh, crystals here in the water. All right, my machine is showing zero here because it's out of the things. So I'm hoping now that this will come up with a 10.01. So I'm going to stick the probe down into the water and give it just a little bit of a shake, it said. Once it stabilizes out, I'm going to go ahead and hit the calibrate and hold that for five seconds. All right, so we can see that shows 10.01 on the side there. So we know we've got a good calibration on our machine now. And this will be ready to test anything that we're going to be testing with on that. So. Definitely this is something nice to have. It is not something that, you know, is required. But if you're going to be doing a lot of fermenting, and you can always test that after a couple of days to see 
if you're uh, doing anything like that to see where the fermentation level is going. And definitely if you're going to be doing any kind of canning, you can always check your foods to make sure that you've got the right acidity level on that so that you can do your water bath canning or you need to do a, your pressure canning, however that works. So this is a nice little tool. I'm going to put the tip back on here. I'm going to give it a wash before I do that because I don't want to contaminate that. Give this a wash and uh, get ready to start using this. And this will be a nice little tool to be added to my collection. I hope you like this content. And if you do, maybe you might consider giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And leave me a comment. Do you use a pH meter? Do you have one like this or one of the other ones on the market? Or do you use the little strips? I'd love to hear from you. And check out one of these other two videos over here on the side. You might find something else you like. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to leave me a comment. What do you think about this pH meter? I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye now.